Good morning and welcome to Food for Thought. It's Friday, December the 11th, 2020, and i um, glad you could join me. My name is Pastor Clint Lang from Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile House, BC. So, continuing along the second week theme of peace in this week's Advent, when we see that uh, the world is filled with the trials and chaos that are occurring out there right now, it makes us ask a question, what's this world going to come to? And the Bible gives us a, a snapshot of where this is all going. And the Bible is a true witness that tells us what the outcomes are going to be. And when one looks at the witness evidence, it is apparent that God is not out of control of the scenarios that are being presented to us. It's not like he isn't involved. It might seem like it because everything seems to be falling apart, but actually God is very much aware of absolutely everything that's taking place, everything that's unfolding in our society. So instead of becoming afraid of our future, um, maybe we should focus in on what we know about the future from the, the best witness possible. And that is our faithful witness, the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is an expert witness because he is the firstborn among the dead. His testimony has the final say in how this world is going to unfold and how it will turn out in the end. Isaiah tells us prophetically that Jesus will be called the Prince of Peace. He is the chief authority because he is the ruler of the kings of the world. And many are fearful about the future, but the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 1, 7, that for his children, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and self-control, and we're in other translations, soundness of mind. You see, the testimony of the witnesses in a court trial are paramount. Um, the testimony that the Bible gives us about Jesus as the chief witness on how things are going to unfold in the future is that he has great love for us. These are not just words. These are actions and he proved it to us by being born into the earth, by showing us what God is like with skin on, and by ultimately paying the, the penalty for our sins so that we could be reconciled to the Father God. John 15, 13 says, greater love as no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. We are the friends of God, because Jesus reconciled us to himself. Now that old song that sings the tune, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. It's indicated in John 3.16 that God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. For the Son of God did not come into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. How do we know this? Do we believe it, or have we become afraid of relinquishing the control of the outcomes that we're facing in this daily trial to him? Are we afraid that things might not go well for us? When our hearts turn to the Lord for strength, my friends, we can sing along with that old Sunday school song. And there's also a hymn that says, It is well with my soul. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Though Satan should buffet, though trial should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul. During the season of Advent, we are called by the scriptures not merely to pay homage to the word of God by looking at it, but by taking it to heart, by believing it, by trusting in the promises that are there. The promises state that the Prince of Peace gives us assurance that Regardless of the estate of the world's affairs, it can be well with our souls. 
Why? Because the one who knows the future is the one that holds my hand. So instead of focusing this season on all of the bad news and the forecasts of the day and everything that's going on in the internet, all the conflicts that are occurring across the globe, whether you know, whether in Canada or other countries, the temptation is for us to pay attention to that more than we do on the promises and the Word of God. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. Father God, help us to keep our eyes on you. Help us to see the world as a place that you've placed us, but that you are in full control of. God, help us to take our eyes off of the circumstances in this life that cause us to fear, and help us to place our trust in the Prince of Peace, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. Lord, help us to look at the truth that you present to us, and the life that you've given to us to walk, and not the bad news of the day. God bless all of you. This is Food for Thought.